Motion for adoption of the report of the Committee on Public Accounts, Commissions, State Authorities and State Enterprises. On the report of the Auditor General, on the financial statements of the National Water and Sewage Corporation for the financial year ended 30th June 2022. Thank you, Chairman. As we've been doing, the report takes 15 minutes so that we have around 30 minutes of debate. And uh, we handle the other report also. Clark, you will capture the full report. The Chair will do a summary. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay on table the report of the Committee on Public Accounts, Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises, Park Kosase on the report of the Auditor General on the financial statements of National Water and Sewerage Corporation for financial year ended 30th June 2022 and other matters. I beg to lay the report and uh, the attendant minutes thereof, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, as uh, we did yesterday, uh, for want of time, I'll skip the introduction, background, methodology, and right away go to the findings, observations, and recommendations. Number one, implementation of IFRS 9, financial instruments, uh, financial asset receivable. The financial statements under note 28 of the financial statements include a financial asset in form of trade receivables. Management estimated the fair value of the net financial asset receivable to be 159.87 billion as at 30th June 2022. However, the auditor was not provided with a periodic assessment and documentation of the risk and parameters leading to the expected trade, trade loss of 8.47 billion as required under IFRS 9. I'll run to the observation. The committee observes that while National Water had prepared the relevant documentation, there was no formal document that had been approved by the management structures of the corporation. The committee recommends that the accounting officer should ensure that the FS9 accounting standard is incorporated in the financial manual and be approved by the board within six months of adoption from the date of adoption of this report and be regularly updated. Item 2, implementation of new IFRS 16 leasing and subsequent amendment on rent concessions of 2020. It was noted that National Water and Sewerage Corporation leased vehicles, offices and land under operating lease contracts whose terms were more than 12 months. In the above regard, under note 26 of the financial statements, National Water recognized an operating lease. Um, right to use non-current asset of $5.7 and operating lease liabilities of 4.09 billion. I want to run to the observation, uh, right honorable speaker. The accounting standard was introduced in 2019 and there is need for training of the staff to appreciate it. And as a committee, we recommend that uh, the accounting officer undertakes training of staff as regards the new accounting standards. Two, to have the standard approved by the board and incorporated into the finance manual. And three, conduct annually comprehensive and authorized IFRS 16 models to enable determination of specific amounts for recognition in the financial statements and disclosure thereof. Let me move to land matters. Included in the financial statements are 180.4 billion freehold land and 4 billion leasehold land respectively. The following matters were noted with regard to land. One, land with expired leases. Two, some land titles were yet to be transferred into the name of National Water and Sewerage Corporation. Three, some land hosting National Water Infrastructure is still owned by other government sister agencies without vesting memorandums of understanding. Four, land and water infrastructure transferred to National Water with ownership contestations and some encroached upon. I'll run to the observations the committee observes that uh, the accounting officer ought to expedite the process of securing interests of the corporation relating to its land Two, absence of a land management committee increases risks and instances of insider dealing and so we recommend that the accounting officer expedites the efforts to title all national water and sewerage corporation land 
Number two, establish, that's the accounting officer, should establish a land management committee composed of senior management within three months from the date of adoption of this report. Issue number four, a very critical one, according to the committee, financial data incident. During the year under audit on the 18th day of August 2022, the company became aware of an incident affecting the ICT servers used to maintain financial records and other critical systems. The incident resulted in two loss of all financial data to the date of the incident. There was no up-to-date backup system. The internal investigation report to establish the cause of the incident has not yet been issued. Management contracted an accounting systems consultant to work with the organization's IT team to reconstruct the data based on available information before the data loss and back up up to 30th of April 2022. The accounting officer told the committee that on August 19th, there was a ransomware attack on the servers of National Water, which encrypted nearly all the systems, preventing them from working. He said the data had been backed up, but this did not include the last two months of the financial year. The data was reconstructed because the systems were internally created, but what was, recons what was recovered was not exactly what was there before, and there was need for reconciliation. Some IT systems were completely destroyed, and the automatic relay system of billing was temporarily removed. The accounting officer told the committee that the system was eventually restored, and a forensic report was being worked on. There was a high suspicion that the matter was internally generated and appropriate human resource action was undertaken, according to the accounting officer. The inflows in the ICT systems were also corrected. He said the forensic report on the matter was strictly confidential. 17 servers in total were targeted and two staff of National Water and Sewerage Corporation um, indicated that they would decrypt the servers at a fee of 17,000 US dollars per server, making the total 289,000 US dollars. That's slightly over a billion Uganda shillings. At this point, the rest of the data uh, was backed up on cloud. The contracts of two staff members, these two, who said they could decrypt the system because they were eventually suspected to having the, being the ones to cause this, were terminated, their contracts. One other staff, who was meant to provide security to the system was reprimanded for negligence and transferred to another department. The committee observes one, the information technology equipment for national water was hacked into, leading to the interruption of the corporation's work and loss of data, which was needed at the time of the audit. Two, there was no evidence that the termination of the staff thought to have been culpable followed due process, which may expose the corporation to lawsuits and potentially lead to loss of revenue. The committee recommends as such, one, the accounting officer should provide the recovered data to the Auditor General for audit in the next audit year. Because this data was not availed to the Auditor General. Uh, why? Because it had disappeared. And so we said it ought to be availed now that they say they recovered it to the Auditor General so that we are sure nothing is being hidden. Number two, the accounting officer should put in place measures to deter the reoccurrence of similar acts in future, including online, real-time off-site backups. Three, the accounting officer should put in place measures to ensure due process for all staff before their services are terminated to avoid legal liability. Other matters. Trade and other receivables to the tune of $212 billion. The committee noted that trade and other receivables in the financial statements stood at $212 billion as at 30th June 2022. The accounting officer submitted that these had increased generally and noted that there were various categories of data. Water for commercial purposes had an outstanding amount of 29 billion, domestic purposes 63 billion, embassies 219 million, industrial purposes 1.6 billion, and MDAs, those are ministries, departments, and agencies, 70.6 billion. He submitted that the bills for MDAs were particularly worrying. Because while for the other data, the money owed was for an average of three months, but the average time for MDAs was 13.5 months. That's over a year. We provide a table there showing how much each of uh, these different entities owe national water. 
Uh, I'll just highlight some of the outstanding ones. Uh, other hospitals, aside from Mulago, that's 6.9 billion shillings, which they owe in water bills. Ministry of Defense, 27.4 billion. Mulago Hospital, 1.96 billion. Uganda Prisons, 11.8 billion. Uganda Police Service, which is the highest, oh, second to Ministry of Defense, 23.3 billion. The accounting officer submitted that the average billing was about 5 billion per month for MDS. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, allow me to skip this and go to the observations. The committee observes that the failure by MDS to pay their water bills affects the corporation's operations and makes it difficult for the corporation to clear its obligations. Additionally, paying VAT on a cruel basis severely affects the cash flow of the corporation, especially where MDAs with huge bills do not pay on time. The committee recommends that the accounting officers for all the MDAs with areas in conjunction with the Ministry of Finance should settle all outstanding areas within six months from the date of the adoption of this report. Two, the Ministry of Finance should ring fence funds to pay the utilities of all MDAs to avoid accumulation of arrears. The other matter, right honorable speaker and members, is creditors. The committee noted that National Water owes its creditors 184 billion shillings. The accounting officer submitted that 18 billion, 10% of the debts were within a credit period of 60 days, while those amounting to 166 billion were over 60 days. The credit period of National Water is 60 days. The committee was further informed that debts amounting to 63 billion relate to SCAP 100 project, which aims to extend water to the entire country. The costs of the project are shared between National Water, 60%, and Government of Uganda, 40%. Whereas the Government of Uganda budget on the project in financial year 2022-23 was 55 billion, as of December 2022, only 10 billion had been released, leaving a deficit of 45 billion. He also explained, the accounting officer, that the aftermath of COVID-19 where water was not being paid for by some sections of the population was a challenge and that as a result, some consumers were not paying as well as they should. The committee observes that the failure by government to honor its core funding obligations impairs the ability of the corporation to, set a, to settle its obligations as well as cater for its operations. We recommend that the Ministry of Finance allocates the balance of unreleased funds for all co-funded projects to the corporation to enable it clear its obligations. The other matter is complaints of inflated water bills. The committee got complaints from members of the general public about inflated costs. The complaints were that National Water and Sewerage Corporation estimates their bills and charges exorbitantly without proper justification, saying that in some months the water bills are extremely high yet there has been no charge in the amounts of water they consume. The accounting officer informed the committee that they too have got similar complaints from the public over time, but said they had not detected any wrongdoing on their part, and that some of the high bills could be as a result of pipe leakages. He, however, indicated that the corporation was embarking on internal investigations to be sure there are no mistakes or wrongdoing by their staff in this respect. We observe that Complaints of inflated water bills affect the willingness of the public to pay and they also taint the image of the corporation. And the committee recommends that National Water and Sewerage Corporation expedites the process of investigating the public complaints and sorts them out with immediacy and provide a report on the same to Parliament within six months from the adoption of this report. The other item is staff welfare. And this is the last item, right, Honorable Speaker. The committee received complaints from staff of National Water who were disgruntled about their pay. They say the pay they get is not commensurate to the work they do. The accounting officer informed the committee that the corporation had received similar complaints from their staff and that management was in the process of revising the salary scale of all their staff members in consultation with the board. The committee observes that improvement of staff welfare is important for the output of the corporation. Two, there is an ongoing process, according to the accounting officer, by management to address these concerns. And the committee recommends that management expedites the process of revising the salary scale and submit a report to Parliament on the same within six months after the adoption of this report. 
Conclusion, National Water and Sewerage Corporation plays a vital role in the provision of water and sewerage services to Ugandans. The services offered should be satisfactory to Ugandans and at a fair price. The committee is, however, concerned about the extremely high amounts of money owed to the corporation by MDAs. If this trend continues, the work of the corporation will be severely hampered. Right Honorable Speaker and members, I beg to move. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, this is a very clear and direct report, and uh, it's very concise. We have a very big report, which I want us also to handle today. It's a very big report on KCCA. So it's a very huge one. So I think we shall just have, let's have a short debate on this. We conclude. I'll start with Honorable Nakut. I've got Honorable question. I go to Honorable Nabukera. I go to Honorable Timuzigo. Tochi and Mirt. Right, Honorable Speaker, I wish to thank you. And I wish to thank the two committee. Each. Yeah. I thank the committee for a great job. I only have two issues now that I have two minutes. Let me rush through the two issues. One, the committee observed that there, there were changes in the international financial reporting standards, and the committee has pushed the burden of training on national water. That I disagree, because the duty of acquainting yourself with new standards is not on national water, on the institute. It is on the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda and the individual accountant. Now, what I get from that point seems to be that national water doesn't have a qualified accountant. If they do, then the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda should make sure that that accountant updates himself through continuous professional development, which we go through as accountants in the country. So that burden on national water should be lifted. Secondly, the question of uh, ministries owing money and agencies on, owing money to national water. There was a time that uh, national water cut off water supply to Kirudu Hospital. My proposal on that one is that for services like that one, healthcare, security, I, I think this parliament should make a, a, a decision on providing water so that the, the, the services are not interrupted because a bill has not been paid. Thank you. Now, honorable colleagues, we appropriate that money. We appropriate. But because these service uh, institutions know they are very sensitive, they don't prioritize. When money is released, they know if you cut off money for a hospital, it is going to be a war. Uh, and even parliament will come and say, connect immediately. But if they were making it a priority, I think the recommendation I've seen in is that we ring fence that money. Maybe the minister starts even paying it from source directed to national water so that it can be used for development purposes. They, they misuse it well knowing we shall come in and intervene. That has to stop. Okay? Honorable Christy. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. On page 6, Right Honorable Speaker, uh, on the areas, you'll realize that um, it is the Minister of Finance that has less to clear. That is 0 0.55 million. But the rest have very huge amounts of money. The reason I support what you have said. Right Honorable Speaker, you know the President on many occasions has made statements indicating that water should be easily accessible. In, in, in my district in Kumi, we were given a project for phase one, and phase two was supposed to be undertaken. Right, Honorable, as I speak now, many people have closed the taps. They are no longer using the money because they complain of the high, the high charges. So even as the report is saying, because of leakages and the rest, we need to do a lot to actually sensitize our people and give them more information why that is happening. And so the challenges should be addressed to encourage people to pay so that they consume the water. And then on the absence of the land management committee, first Mr. Speaker, I support that all this land should be titled. Because you are aware of what is happening in the country where people are grabbing government land. What could have been the cost, Chair? Because for every institution, for the, the board to be in place, 
there is a specific period of time when it is about to expire. A new one is supposed to be put in place. What happened with the national water? That this gap continued. Possibly it could be the reason why these areas remained big what? Big numbers. Let us address this. Water is very critical. We should encourage Ugandans to consume the water. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable colleagues. I had picked you. Uh, yes, I had uh, picked on about Nifa. I had picked on about Timazigu and Tochi. And thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. We have other accountability reports, uh, colleagues. We have another report. I want to thank the committee for the tremendous work they've done. Uh, mine is about the, the two staff that were. Um, the, the two staff that were sent away from their job. I want to talk about the contracts. I don't know whether the committee interested itself uh, in looking into the appointment letters if there were, if there were also um, employment contracts between the staff and uh, National Water and Sewerage Corporation because that leads to lawsuits and costs that would um, yeah, damage or that would um, incur such that National Water pays as a result of court cases. Secondly, I want to also, because before the land man management committee is in place, there has to be a legal department. Because when the leases expire, the legal department, because I know it's there, it's, it's mandated to renew the leases. Secondly, the land owned by the sister companies, was there a memorandum did the committee interest itself to understand whether there is a memorandum between National Water and the sister companies? Because that is very risky. We do not know the status of uh, National Water between the sister entities and uh, National Water itself. So we urge National Water to probably use its legal department before the Land Management Committee to manage the situation. Thank you. Honorable Timuzugu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also join colleagues to thank the committee for, for this report concerning the issues in National Water and Sewerage Corporation. Mr. Speaker, the issue of having bills which cannot be trusted by customers was the same problem with Umeme until they made uh, the, 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 until they introduced the system of Yaka, which is digital. And because this corporation is not competing with any other, we might not uh, encourage them to be proactive. So I propose that the minister in charge should look at bringing the digital component of bidding in the same organization so that we can know if water, if your bill is normal, there is no water so that you can pay. That will solve the problem and we, should, we shall stop mistrust, mistrusting the corporation. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Dochi. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. I thank the committee. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I think this report should uh, put our sectoral committees on notice that come uh, the period when uh, MDAs and ministries come at the time of a ministerial policy statement where they report the half-year financial statement. It should be at that point that we have to scrutinize and put them to task so that uh, we will know if they are not paying as a result of um, money not being released to them or if it is released to them and they put it to different use, then we put them to task there. Secondly, right on the speaker, National Water also, they have got two ways of billing. One, they can, uh, if you are not careful, they can easily connect you and charge you not at residential, uh, residential use. Many people at construction time, they are charged under industrial use and even when you complete they maintain that so if you are not careful they continue charging you and that is when you even find that the bill keeps on going higher thank you very much thank you now honor i would see you to be vigilant 
Because at construction, the indeed, the requirement is you are charged commercial. When you finish construction, it's you to go to national water. And you say, I finished. But for if you sleep in your house, they can think you're continuing with construction. <laughs> and they're even getting a higher charge. So it's in their favor. So uh, it's very important indeed for members to be vigilant. Thank you very much, right hon. the speaker. Right hon. the speaker, um, I have to thank the committee for the report, but also say that National Water is one of the successful corporations so far that we still pride in as a country. We need to thank them. That said, Mr. Speaker, the underpayment of junior staff is true. This could be one of the causes of the inflation and the underpay underpayment uh, resulting, no, I want to say, underpayment of the junior staff could be the, least, the leading cause to sabotage, malicing, and inflating or overcosting other consumers. Because when they don't, they don't get paid, these staff, at times they end up shifting the burden to the consumers. Mr. Speaker, at one time, in Mkono here, I saw a junior person asking for a bribe for someone to get connected because they were saying, after all, we are not paid. It's only our office people who are well paid. To us, we end on these petty, petty payments we pick from you people. So they were shifting the burden to the consumers. So I want to agree with the findings of the report that we need to ask and appeal to the management of National Water and the Sewage Corporation to look at the payments across the board instead of underpaying the junior staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Find the switch on. The committee. Find it. I don't know. Maybe you can get another microphone. It's working, right honorable. Uh, for a good report, which they have presented this, uh, this evening. Uh, I take this opportunity also to mention that there is a lot of wastage out there. Recently, I went to my home, and I found a pipe of water running freely. And I took advantage and called National Water and Sewerage Corporation. But they took long, and I didn't mind because it was watering my gardens freely. So I want to also appeal to them to do a better job in the future. But I also want to thank National Water Corporation Management because most areas now are accessing safe drinking water. And they have a company called... Uh, uh, which they subcontracted, and it has done a very good job in the villages, and they are reaching many, many areas. So we, as we point out the shortcomings in National Water Corporation, we also want to thank them very much, especially the management for a job well done. Thank you, Right no. Honorable. Now, Honorable colleagues, allow me give you information. In 2017, when we were processing the budget, National Water made a proposal on a program called SCAP and uh, to connect 25,000 small villages because National Water had been an organization which was being appreciated for being profit making. So the question was, people don't have water and you're declaring profit. And the moment you declare profit, it goes to the consolidated fund. And you know the principle. The moment money goes to the consolidated fund, it loses color can no longer go for water, it can no longer go for anything. So, National Water made a proposal that uh, give us, we, we need 30 billion, then the money we declare as profit from our own operations, we collect 55 billion, then we go, we connect small villages. And that's the time we also said, well, you can hike the rate for, 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 for town consumers to subsidize the rate for villages. And we went into a serious debate. 
but government provided zero money after approving it. So when it reached in parliament, I remember we made a decision and it came from the Committee on Natural Resources and supported by Budget Committee and later on by the House that we cut money from money provided for thermal generators in Tororo and we provide money to National Water. So the program started. Now, why I brought you that information? Sometimes we are accused at Parliament level for reallocation that you tampered with the budget. But money for deemed energy which we cut managed to kickstart a program that has connected many villages. So as Parliament we can behave responsibly uh, or you can behave in a way that is responsible to the citizens and you save them. Unfortunately this financial year it skipped our eye. That money was again removed. Meaning we are not going to continue with this car program. But that's a program where you could find the national water even deep in a village. That's how it was coming to deep in a village. So I hope we shall monitor it very well. We see how best we can uh, rescue that program again. Uh, Honorable colleagues, uh, we have uh, another very big uh, uh, report which we are going to, uh, to handle. Uh, so I want to put a question that the report of the Committee of Public Accounts uh, Commissioners, statutory authorities and state enterprises Park, Kosase, on the report of Auditor General on the financial statements of National Water and Sewage Corporation for financial year ended 30th June 2022 and other matters be adopted. Those in favor say and to the content A. Those in favor have it. Uh, the eyes have it. The amendments were never moved uh, to, to, be, to, be, to be captured. This is an issue which a sectoral committee should be able to handle after interacting with government.